Welcome to the channel. Did you know that there's only one month left until the Formula One race in Vegas? I'm excited. I hope you are. I know a lot of people are and a lot of people are not. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. This is the third F1 video I've done, I think, maybe the fourth, um, covering the, the status of the track and getting the, the race ready and the preparations and all that. So for this video, with one month left to go, I kind of want to get into that. And I want to talk about where we are with the track, the facilities, what spectators can expect, fans that are paying really good money for, for this event, what they can expect. And I also want to touch on how the uh, Las Vegas locals feel about the event, how they've expe expressed some of their frustrations and all that. So we're going to get into all of that today. Before all of that, though, I want to remind you that uh, your comments are certainly welcome. And I'd like to know your thoughts on uh, Las Vegas having a race on a Saturday night and how you feel about that. Uh, and just your thoughts on uh, Formula One in Vegas in general. And while you're on your way to the comments, uh, if you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I'd appreciate it if you clicked on subscribe. Okay, so first let's talk about preparations. And this one's a little bit touchy, but I feel the need to address it since it just kind of came out in the last couple of weeks. As you know, as a race fan, Formula One uh, pit area the building usually where the pits uh, are housed is called the paddock. And that name, unfortunately, has a very, very bad connotation for the Las Vegas area. Um, back in 2017, on October 1st, there was the uh, Las Vegas Route 91 Harvest Music Festival. And unfortunately, it was the scene of the largest mass shooting in American history. And the perpetrator's name was Stephen Paddock. So F1 has, uh, I, I believe they've done this on their own. Uh, they've gone to the, uh, the, the uh, powers that be in Las Vegas, the county commissioners and all that, and they've told them that they, uh, they, they plan on not using the word paddock to refer to the building in all their communications because they realize it's a sensitive subject for Las Vegas. Now, I know a lot of you, you know, cynics like me are kind of like, oh, it's just a word, it's a paddock, it's, you know, whatever. Why would you why would you care about that? But I think this is one of those instances where we can all just kind of say, OK, fine, that's that's what you want to do. You're showing some sensitivity to the community. That's good. Um, so I think we should encourage this and, and not be too cynical about it. So this new facility, which we're calling the pit building, is 95 percent complete. Uh, I think they're down to just like final touches, some work on the interior, maybe some signage, that kind of thing. Uh, but the building's basically done. It's really an impressive facility, and it's the largest uh, pit building uh, in uh, Formula One uh, on the Formula One circuit. Most of the rest of the work on track is in placing grandstands, pedestrian bridges, and other track features necessary for a safe race for drivers and an enjoyable experience for ticket holders. One of the better parts of the experience for ticket holders is catering. Yes, catering. If you ever gone to a super box or club box or anything like that in an arena. Usually you have it laid out a kind of little spread of different things, sliders and wings and shit like that. But for us filth in the grandstands and general admission seating, we will have a variety of menu items such as chinois chicken salad, I hope I pronounced that correctly, short rib grilled cheese, shake ramen, toro birria tacos, chicken and waffles, my favorite, pulled barbecue jackfruit tater tots, hot dogs, wild cinnamon and sugar cider donuts, yum, S'mores churro, sounds dangerous, fried PB&J, and more. So now when someone spins out and free practice one, I can make a beeline for the chicken and waffle stand. Depending on your seating, spectators will also be treated to a wide range of entertainment options, bands, DJs, that kind of thing, uh, before and after the uh, sessions. So what time is all this fun happening? Drivers will qualify at midnight local time in Vegas. That's 8 a.m. in the morning in the U.K., the race itself is going to be on Saturday night at 10 p.m. So that means qualifying in the race are technically, well, in Vegas, they will be on the same day. A couple of other notes. Room rates at uh, several strip properties have actually come down. It's a three-day event, so many people are going to be in town for three or four nights. Uh, when they initially announced the race and released tickets, room rates were pretty high. I jumped on a rate. Uh, I thought it was way too high for the property I was going to stay at. And um, once I heard that the rates were starting to come down, I canceled that reservation, made another one, and I saved about $1,000. So if you're coming in from out of town and you bought your room early on and you can still get out of it, I would think about doing that. I mean, provided you have another reservation available to you uh, at the cheaper rate. But um, uh, worked for me. It should work for you. 
Vegas residents, and I know I have a lot of you in my YouTube community, uh, you can buy a single day ticket for Thursday for free practice one and two. That ticket's $200 for the day. It does include the catering too. Um, for the race day, you can buy a single day ticket for $1,300. I don't know where you're sitting with for that $1,300. And to be honest, uh, the $1,300 tickets to me for one day is, is pretty high. Like I'm paying $1,700 for three days. And to me, that's worth it. If you want to get a taste of the experience of Formula One and being at the track and all that, the Thursday ticket for $200, it's not a bad deal. $1,300 for the race, not so much. That seems like it's a pretty high price where you're probably only going to get um, general seating and, and not the best grandstands. So what do you think? Between the city, Liberty Media, the FIA, uh, and the race organizers, they've spent about $560 million to bring Formula One back to Las Vegas. Uh, it is a lot of money, and for the city, it looks they're estimating that it should be, bring in about uh, 1.2 billion dollars for the weekend. It's 1.2 billion dollars for weekend. So this brings me to my last point, and that's community reaction. Um, there's some people that are really into it, some people that are not into it. It's gotten really vocal. It's worth remembering that Las Vegas is a factory town. And the factory produces casinos and casino gambling. That's what the factory does. And there are a lot of other factory towns popping up all over the United States that have gambling. So Vegas is competing for a slice of that market. So anything they can do to get more people into the city is a good thing. And when you have a slowish weekend in November, right before the rodeo comes into town, and you can get the highest revenue of the year, you can get a billion dollars into the city, um, that's something that if you live in Vegas, you should be encouraging that. You should be welcoming that. There's a lot of frustrations about Vegas. If you have a family in Vegas, your kids are going to go to a public school system that's among the worst in the country by all measures. It's really, it's a shame. But that's because the factory town doesn't really care so much about the education of children. They just want you to be smart enough to become a dealer or work in the, in the casino. That's that's the mindset. So I understand that there's a lot of frustration as to where tax dollars go and things like that. But this money is good overall for the economy of Las Vegas. And so I feel that it's something that should be encouraged. Now, I get the frustrations that people have, particularly casino workers that have had to deal with the traffic and the paving. And now they're putting up uh, bleachers and barriers and things like that. And so it's a real hassle to get into work. I, I totally get the frustrations there. The Convention and Visitors Authority has decided that they're going to operate shuttles for casino employees during the race. My suggestion is that um, next year they should do that as soon as they start preparing for the race. They should offer those shuttles and they should run them through the until they, they've torn everything down. I think that would go a long way towards helping the, the employees understand, hey, this is for the overall benefit of the city and also understand that somebody cares about their concerns because they have legitimate concerns. Now, where I kind of like chuckle a bit is when people start, you know, losing their minds over things like, oh, they cut down the trees in front of Bellagio because they got to put up bleachers and things like that. You do know they're going to replace them. You do realize that MGM is not going to have the sidewalks in front of Bellagio look like shit for 11 months out of the year just because the F1 race is going to be in November. F1 and, you know, F1 management and they, they've done this for years setting up these temporary street circuits. They've worked with these companies to say, okay, hey, we know we got to put this eyesore up so that we can protect our drivers with barriers and, and seat our fans. We're not going to destroy your property. And so there's a lot of pearl clutching going on as to, you know, what's going on with the city and all that. But they'll get it done. They'll take it down. And next year won't take as long. It's not going to be a six-month process. They're not going to be, uh, if there's parts of the track that need to be paved, repaved because they get torn up by the cars, then they'll do that, but they're not going to have to, you know, completely repave the circuit and spend all summer doing that. Just understand that if you're somebody who's not into F1, you're not going to come down to the strip for the, the weekend. Don't pretend that they're, they're keeping you from your casinos. It's just something you're not going to do. Let the people that want to come to the city come and enjoy the spectacle, leave a lot of money behind and make the most of it. Just like when the rodeo comes to town, the rodeo people are there for their entertainment in the rodeo. The entertainment for uh, race car fans is to watch cars drive around the city. But both groups spend a lot of money at the casinos, and that's what that's what Vegas really needs. I will be filming as much as I can, 
and I plan on posting a lot of that up here to YouTube, uh, either during or shortly thereafter the race. So if you happen to be a ticket holder and you're in the West Harmon grandstands, uh, drop me a line. Maybe we can meet up for a beer or a cinnamon cider donut. Uh, either one works, but I'll see you at the track.